And this time on the bench, we're looking at a Denon DRA275RD stereo receiver. These date back to about year 2000, and it's basically an amp with a built in radio. Um, quite a posh one, it's got radio text and all sorts. Around the back, it's fully featured, it's got all these inputs and two sets of speaker outputs. This one doesn't look too bad, but it's got a few blemishes on there. There's a little mark on the display, and it's a bit scuffed up around the power button. Let's find out just how broken this is. Well, nothing's happened. <laughs> no display. Hmm. And these are from the early days of doing lead-free solder, so I reckon this is full of dry joints. Well, it's very dusty. <laughs> we saw inrush current, so the fuses aren't blown, so that's not why it's dead. Well, there are the output transistors. This will be a Class AB design, I reckon. Quite a big heat sink. It's only 40 watts per channel. And this will be the radio tuner module, which just plugs into the main board. This little board is what makes this an AV receiver, I suppose. Um, it handles a bit of video. What is this? BU4066. It's just a four channel switch. Nothing clever. These are the front panel potentiometers, these are like the balance and tone controls. And because they're sticking out the front, we know the board's got to come out that way. So the back panel's got to come off. Well that should come off now. There we go. Don't know if you guys can see that, there's a little spider on a little spider web. Let's <laughs> so remove some of the wobbly parts first. And this ribbon cable's in the way. And that's revealed a few likely suspects. Larger objects tend to be a bit loose. Especially these. Oh, oh blimey. That feels like it just lift out. No, it won't. <laughs> unplug that. That can't stay on. Oh, it's tied up. Soon have that off. <laughs> and these knobs have got to come off as well. These are coming off quite nicely, actually. Oh, <laughs> some nicer than others. I think I'm going to hoover this out first. <laughs> it's filthy. Now that dust's gone, I can see a little plug there. That's got to come out. And the heat sink's held in with four screws from underneath. We can start with a wobbly one I found. Yeah, what is that one? 7806, a 6 volt regulator. Hmm. Well, that'll stop it powering up, that's for sure. Look at that. All three pins disconnected. That's a very dry joint. I mean, luckily, because the solder's gone, it's not knackered the pads up. What else is around here? Well, a lot of it looks dry, to be honest. Just have a good look around. See if there's any more. It's larger components, mainly. And around the sockets, anywhere there's people plugging things in and out is likely to get a bit of a bending. And cracks, and the speaker terminal is actually normally quite solid, I mean, good chunky connections there. And a careful look around the transistors on the heat sink, that's another place that's favourite. Any bending and heavy weights on there. Be sort of looking good as far as I'm concerned, can't see any more. Pop this back in. Let's see what sort of reaction we get now. 
What is that it? Just a LED? How would you turn it on? Now it might be stuck in standby because it was switched off with the remote before it's powered off because it will stay that way. Now according to the manual uh, you just toggle the power switch a few times and that should get it out of standby. Nope. <laughs> well we're at the behest of a microcontroller now so I need to get the schematics out and find out what's up with it. And that 80 pin rectangular bastard has all the answers. I'm going to have to take the front panel out. remove the main switch. Now that's a bit more accessible, I can do some poking around. I've just drawn to where it says 5 volts there, I'm just going to measure from ground to here, see what we've got. And we've got 5.2 volts, that's okay. And we've even got a minus 27 volts, that'll be for the display, uh, which it is. Let me scope probe in. Oh, I need to ground as well. I'm not measuring high speed signals, that ground will do. And very helpfully in the service manual there's a chart that shows the pins and all their functionalities for this thing. So this is the main brains of the operation and we can see this table here just to go through it. It's got like a name for every pin, it tells if it's an input or an output and then we got the logic which should be low or high and then what it means. So I mean first of all there's one called stop. It tells you here this is the power down detection. It should be low at power down. Now we just saw that it didn't actually respond to me cycling the power switch. That's pin one. Pin one's just in the corner here. I'm just going to cycle the power now. And that's working. It's also worth checking the oscillator on these. There should be a four megahertz clock here. Let's probe that. I presume that's around here. There's a three pin device there. That'll be the oscillator. Nothing. Nothing. Ooh. Ah, there it is. It looks just a blur. Let's turn this up. See if we can trigger on it. Quite a fast signal. That's 200 nanoseconds per division. Yeah, I'd say that's about 4 megahertz. Nothing wrong there. Where next? I should actually check the output that turns it on. Pin 29. Power control output. H equals on. So it needs to be high. So where are we then? So this is pin 24 there. So we've got 25, 26, 27, 28, 29. It's low. Hmm. It's worth mentioning microcontrollers don't often go that bad. It's been told not to work for some reason. Um, oh, the reset is an input. That should be low. What's that, pin 12? These can be hard to count. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Ah, there, that bad. That's not good. Slow it down a bit. Yeah, it's not getting to 5 volts. What are we on? 2 volts per division. That's about 2.5 volts. I'm not sure what speed that's going at. For slower signals, I need a digital scope, so sorry for the noise. Here we are. That's the signal. It's a short little one. Need to uh, find out the period of this. See if it's related to 50 hertz. Well, well it's not. So there we go, we got 3.8 hertz. Yeah, it's not really anything that it's it's like a quarter of a second apart. That reset signal's coming from the main board of this ribbon cable. That's going on pin 22, which is here. Yeah. It's coming down the cable like that. And despite what the board says, they've got the pin out the wrong way around on here. This is pin one, so we want seventh pin from the end there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There we are same signal. And the reset signal comes from this transistor here, this is the circuit for it, TR451. This little transistor here, that's the one. So let's check the pins. One of them is a collector. No, it's not that one. There's a collector. 
same signal again. What about this leg here? This might be the base. It's showing very little of anything voltage wise. I wonder if it does it with the ribbon disconnected. Let's see what that does for us. It's on solidly. Wow. We'll plug that back in because that's when the trouble happens. We can see here that there's 5 volts is fed through the stop signal which should be high across resistor R451 and this reset transistor just pulls it to ground so this just keeps pulsing so there's probably something wrong here. Now just check this resistor out. So this is the input side that's a nice 5 volts that's fine that is. Yeah that's where we got it pulsing there well, I think I've got to take the main board out again, have another look around there. Yeah, I've gone all over this board, I can't find any problems. No shorts, no brakes. Mm. I think just to sense check it, I'm going to pull this transistor out. <laughs> oh, I can't measure the legs, the transistor's missing. Let's try there. Oh, wow. It's still doing it. Got a constant 5 volts here. What is doing that? Well, it's not this transistor, that's for sure. That can go back in. This is weird, very weird. Well, it must be on here. What a nuisance. Um, and I might fetch the board off. There's not a great deal on this side of the board, but here is the resonator, that blue part, and there's a 10k resistor and a little capacitor. That's all involved with the reset thing. These are quite reliable parts, really. I don't see those failing. Which is a shame, because if it's the microcontroller itself, this thing's for the bin. The first one on this channel I couldn't fix. <laughs> I'm just going to cut the trap there. If this stops it pulsing, it's bad news. Let's make the measurement. Ah, uh, yeah, it's dead. Well, there's nothing I can do to save this one. They stopped making this 20 years ago, um, parts aren't available. Uh, that chip, even if you could buy one, is actually programmed with Denon's own software. So you're completely screwed. Micro is dead, throw it away. Catch you next time. Look at it glowing away like the saddest HAL 9000. <laughs>